and welcome to This Week in James City County. I'm your host, Renee Dahlman. Today, I am once again, for the first time in a long time, it feels like, sitting down with Ruth Larson. Ms. Larson is the Board of Supervisors member representing the Berkeley District. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I've missed being here. I know. It's been a long time, but... We are socially distanced about as far apart as I think we can get and still do the podcast in the same room. I have to say, I am very impressed. This is like a football field socially distanced. So (laughs) It it is. You've done a great job. Why, thank you. And this way, then, we don't have to wear the masks. Yes. It's easier to talk. Yes. so. So... What have you learned? I know that lots of folks have learned um, how to bake sourdough bread. (laughs) People have redone rooms in their house. I've learned how to fold my socks in a different way. And so now my (laughs) sock drawer is beautiful. Every time I open it up, now that we're back into sock season, I'm like, "Ah, look at this. What have you done? Well, it's funny you mentioned redo a room. Uh, you know, my daughters, my two youngest children are both in college. Mm-hmm. And w- my one daughter that's at George Mason, she came home immediately in March when this happened because she was on spring break. So right. it just happened all coincide. And her sister joined her a little bit later. She she hung around uh, Blacksburg a little bit, hoping to get ba- that she was going to be able to get back in the pool. Sure. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. And so they helped me redo my dining room, um, helped me start to redo our living room. So we did a lot of home projects as well. Very good. And uh, then a few weeks ago, I started watching the Home Edit on Netflix. I've heard about that. <laughs> that's very that's very dangerous to start watching <laughs> yeah. because you go, oh my goodness. I mean, maybe there are a lot of people out there that are very organized, and I applaud them. But that is just not a strength of mine. I'm able to organize my papers for for my my board of supervisors because I'm on a lot of different committees. Right. So you have to, you know, somebody taught me to keep bags with the different um, committees that I'm on. Mm -hmm. But uh, I've I've redone a completely redone a closet, and since then. And uh, it's kind of funny because I went to Target to buy some organizing supplies and they were almost out of everything. So obviously I'm not the only person right. watching the home edit. So, you know, so it it's it definitely evolved since March, you know, I've taken more and more things on. Right. And um, because it, you know, unfortunately I'm not getting together with friends and right. family as much and, and that part I definitely do miss. And my daughters have gone back to college, mm-hmm. and so I don't, uh, you know, I don't get to see them. They're really urging students, of course, to stay at college right. and not come home until Thanksgiving and vice versa for mm-hmm. parents so that we can try to stop the spread. Right. So I am very fortunate, though. My son lives out here. He lives here in Norge, so I do get to see him. Good. So, you know, I know it's it's tough on you and I were just talking about this a, a little bit ago. You know, this is tough on people. Loneliness mm-hmm. is is hard, right? And so, you know, I, I urge people to to reach out. I know I've seen, I think I've seen something on James City County social media mm-hmm. about dealing with COVID and right. if you're lonely and and what to do. And I, I applaud you for yep. for getting that type of information out because it can be a tough time. So I hope people will call neighbors or friends and and not, because we don't know when this, you know, when we're going to see a major change anyway in in the way things are going now. Right. And people do need people. That's a song, (laughs) but it's the truth. Right. And especially with holidays right around the corner. And yeah. And and how's that all going to be handled? Exactly. So people need to take care of themselves and take care of each other. And yep. We're going to make it through. Yeah. Now we're getting a lot of um, email inquiries about Halloween. Yes, we are. And I know neighborhoods are struggling with it too. The CDC has come out with some guidelines, but Halloween, you know, kids love to dress up. They love to get candy. I I hope we can figure out something. Right. uh, Keeping everybody safe, but allowing kids to have some semblance of normal childhood. Absolutely. People need normalcy as close as we can get to it they, right now. They do because they're not getting that for their education right now. Right. I know some of the private schools are, are in person, right. but you know, our uh, WJCC schools are, they do have, um, I believe some of their special ed classes mm-hmm. are in person, mm-hmm. but uh, they don't have general ed in. And so these kids are not, they're seeing their friends through Zoom. What a 
What a different world. Right. And even Bright Beginnings, by the way, they're doing Zooms. Are they? These little three-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'd love to witness some of that. But um, my neighbor, my my neighbor Matthew, who is in Bright Beginnings, he told me um, all about seeing his friends on Zoom. Aww. So, uh, yeah, so it's, it, it's a different world. Well, one thing that seems to have not missed a beat has been the Board of Supervisors. That's true. You all, you haven't missed a meeting. No. Nope. And I know that a lot of other communities went to virtual so even the board meetings are on zoom but you all that have done something a little different we have we we've met in person and we've socially Mm -hmm. distanced um on the dais and we were happy that miss sadler was back Mm -hmm. uh this this meeting this past tuesday and we we had to bump mr stevens uh down (laughs) to a table but um but we were all able to be on the dais and, you know, I think the the important thing was is that we, whatever choice you made as a member of the Board of Supervisors was okay. There was no, there was no judging, you know, right. uh, Miss Sadler had some health conditions that, that kept her at home and, and we understand mm-hmm. that and there was no pressure to do anything different. But I also think it was important to those of us that could come to be in person that we show that there was the continuation of governing. Right. And, you know, you all were working. And so we, we needed to work too. And, you know, we had some employees that could work from home, Mm -hmm. but we had others that they, they couldn't, they couldn't work from home. Right. And so, you know, I think out of respect to show, Hey, you know, we, we need to be working here in person too, Mm -hmm. if we can. Mm -hmm. And so we, yes, you're right. We've been, we've been here since March. So, and we've we've all, to the best of my knowledge, remained remained healthy. We've been really good about ma- wearing our mask into the room. Mm-hmm. We take them off for our meeting, and we've got hand sanitizer and um, making sure that we're keeping socially distant when we're um, when our meetings finished and we're catching up. Right, all of the things that we never had to think about before. Now, no, have you had a mask dream yet? No. Oh, I did. I was going into, in my dream, I was going into a store, which I miss dearly, and I wish I could just go wander for hours, but I can't. Yeah. And I was going up to the door, and I realized I didn't have my mask on. Well, I'm sure in my sleep, I was sitting there pulling up my t-shirt that I Oh, (laughs) gosh. Yeah, it was, so I was like, okay, need to relax a little (laughs) Well, it's very difficult because I've jumped out of my car. Oh, it's so easy. Gone back, and um, I am back in my gym. Uh, They they were closed for a few months, Mm -hmm. and then when they opened, I did go back, and we wear masks to go in and out and whenever we travel around the gym. And so you're, you're right. It's just such a different way of life, but... I will tell you that after this first happened and I I went to pick up a prescription and there was a plexiglass Mm -hmm. that had been put in there. And I did say to the pharmacy clerk, I said, you know, when you think about it, you really should have had plexiglass all along because people are coming in here at their very sickest. True. And talking to you. And you're really on the, you know, you're you're on the front line. Right. And you had no protection. So I mean, there's and we should have probably all when we went to the doctor's office, if we were sick, put on a mask. Right. So there are some changes I think that that have been made that moving forward will be okay, right? You know, and we'll probably be other able to relax others, but uh, but yes, overall it's a you know twenty twenty is a weird bird. It is yes. Well, and I did a podcast earlier with Jenny Toms, the treasurer, mm-hmm. and I was telling her one thing that I wish or hope continues are the appointments at DMV. I mean, I, I, I'd like them to be, have more or be yes. closer together or whatever, but for DMV select, even it's so nice. Right. And especially with our DMV select, you can get an appointment pretty much the next day. Right. And there are some things like that that I was like, Oh, I kind of like that. Yes. But it'll be interesting to see. Yes. My friend, as a matter of fact, got her uh, real ID. She oh. hadn't gotten hers yet. Yeah. And so she had to make an appointment and she said it was so much more 
organized and in so much better than right. before when you would get in there and take a number and have to wait and everything it just went so much better right uh, so yes we'll see what what of these things stay and and what go right yes. and and what never comes back like not in terms of precautions but i've read things about handshakes and about birthday cakes and you know <laughs> It's really interesting. It is. I yeah. saw where somebody did, like, they just handed somebody a candle and said <laughs> so they wouldn't blow on the cake. Right. And yeah, I mean, Crazy I don't know. Times. There's, I'm definitely, I, I take this extremely seriously and I'm, I'm heartbroken for those that have lost their life from this virus and from all the people that have been ill. But, you know, I do think about sometimes back to my, grandparents day Mm -hmm. I mean when I was growing up I had not only my grandparents but my great-grandparents and I think about food that sat out (laughs) you know I mean it there just was not this sense of urgency to get everything in the refrigerator you know my my dad's mom always sat left when you finish dinner I gotta let the leftovers sit out till they cool off so you know for hours right we never got mm-hmm. ill, right? you know? And so, you know, I, th- I think about how many birthday cakes have been blown on and no one's ever gotten <laughs> sick from it, but we're going to, you know, we got to change it up now. Yeah. So, you know, again, it's good to be, to take precautions yes. and to try to keep as many people healthy and, you know, please wear those masks. I, and it, we want kids to be, you know, just as we were just saying, we want kids to be able to get back to school. Right. You know, we want to be able to um, do some county events if possible, Mm -hmm. you know, to get people out and to be able to get, be together and share ideas and that kind of thing. So, so I hope people will wear their masks. Absolutely. And I would like to get to where we can do podcasts without a football field. (laughs) In between. Yes, I, this is very, I'm convenient that you have this, is this a file or, or or just a big, huge table. Big, huge table with storage underneath. Nice. Yes. Okay. So yeah, yeah. and a perfect podcast yes, table. Yes, I'm glad it all worked out. <laughs> it did. So you were talking about things getting back to normal, that that's what we're all aiming for. I know that you're on the tourism I am. Um, committee. What can you tell <sighs> us about tourism? Well, I can tell you that tourism is taking a big hit. On a positive note, Labor Day was incredible around here. Okay, uh, I think unexpected, um, but uh, I had we at our last meeting. One of our hoteliers told us that they had sixty walk-ins, wow. which they've had nothing like that all summer. And so you know they were they were scrambling in some ways, but very happily scrambling. Uh, one of the restaurant tours was telling us that they, it was a busier Labor Day than last year. Really. So, you know, we we are seeing some visitation uh, mm-hmm. kick back up. I think, frankly, having kids in virtual, it's allowing families to take, you know, maybe that didn't want to travel earlier in the summer. They're traveling now. Right. Uh, of course, Bush Gardens is still being held uh, to their lower attendance mm-hmm. right now, uh, which we are hoping that the uh, administration will look at mm-hmm. and and possibly change that because they have a really safe plan that they've created. Okay. And so, you know, they would welcome the opportunity. You know, we not only forget that they are an, an, a large employer mm-hmm. in James City County, they're also a very large taxpayer Correct. in James City County. And so if they can open... With more numbers safely, we want them to be able to do that. And that does help hotels. It helps restaurants. It helps grocery stores. Tourism is everything. Right. And it's it's not just one thing. It impacts so many different things in our community. And I don't think people realize that. Mm-hmm. You know, they may have gotten a little taste of it during our budget presentation because we really did try to talk about that and I thought Sharon Day and Scott Stevens did a great job with that we are a community that depends on tourism revenue right and we are down if anybody watches our meeting that we had this this past Tuesday and I if you did not see it I do urge you to do so because uh, and I said last Tuesday and I'm sorry because it's depending on when this would run right. so that would have been the 22nd of okay. September and 
you know, Ms. Day does give a financial update mm-hmm. of where we are, and I think that's important for citizens to see. And there is some discussion about surplus, but as Supervisor, Supervisor Hipple pointed out, some of the surplus that we have is simply because we've put off things right. that we, we can't put off forever. Right. We have to, you know, we have to go back and take care of some business. But going back to the Tourism Council, of which I'm a member, they are continuing with advertising. They're continuing hosting influencers. That's a big thing. Wow. Um, Maybe those that are a little younger (laughs) um, are more aware. There are social media influencers that are on Instagram and Facebook and that type of thing. They have a lot of followings. Mm -hmm. And so they come to your area. They are um, usually put up by some of our partners, and they do a lot of different experiences in our historic triangle. Mm -hmm. And so they may go down to Colonial Williamsburg. They may go down to Jamestown Beach or Chickahominy Riverfront Park or go out to Freedom Park and do Go Ape. And so, and they take pictures of that and and their family experiencing that or, or going to a winery or going down to Yorktown and going to the waterfront down there. And they get a lot of people who Mm -hmm. see that they're doing this and say, oh, yeah, I think that's someplace I might want to go. And so the Tourism Council has been working. We did not stop advertising because of the pandemic. Now, they've changed their focus. They've gone to a dry, you know, it was kind of ironic because we had just talked about our plan, and our plan was we were going to go off to, oh, excuse me, we're going to go after New York. We were going to go after some further markets that may have to fly here. Right. We had to switch that up a little bit and go for markets that could drive here Mm -hmm. in a day. And so they've kept that up and uh, hopefully, you know, we're going to start seeing, and I think we already are, frankly, we're going to see some payoff from that. But I will tell you, we, we've got a ways to go. I, I don't know that we'll see, you know, I think we'll see an uptick in, in 2021. Uh, you know, they're talking about, though, the tourism industry not really being back till 20, 2022. And so, you know, that's rough for us around here. Right. So it's important to remain positive and it's important to you know, get those guests that are that are comfortable being here and they see us doing what we're supposed to do mm-hmm. to stay healthy, then they'll want to come to a community that takes this very seriously. But, you know, the important thing is to keep getting the message out that we, you know, we want you to visit, we want you to visit, be healthy, and that tourism is very important. Yes, absolutely. And I think that you're right, that people in the community, they notice that there are more cars or they notice that the lines are longer or, but they don't realize that all of these folks, when they're coming to our county or the historic triangle are bringing money. And all of that results in lower tax bills for everyone. It does. And I I know it's very tough because, you know, I, I see social media and I see, you know, we don't want people to come here. But, you know, there are people who, this is their hometown, like me, and there are people that moved here, you know, at some point in their life, and you move to a place that has an economy based on tourism. Mm -hmm. Now, that said, our economic development department works very hard to bring in business. We're very fortunate. We have some very uh, successful businesses here, from small to large. Right. Right that have really helped us and are, and are helping us now. But overall, we're a tourism-based economy. So, you know, just I just would ask that people keep that in mind. Absolutely. So, and um, also, if you can, you know, remember those small mom-and-pop shops, but also remember your chains are locally owned. Right. You know, it's it, just because it's a chain it's it could be a franchise, mm-hmm. you know. I think a Moe's, mm-hmm. uh, for instance. Do you know that's owned by someone that's that's local, lives in James City County, and so you know if you can go out or you're comfortable getting a curbside pickup or you know, it, it, please do, please mm-hmm. do try to support the local economy as much as you can because we have seen we Steinmart. I mean, we know right. there there are businesses that are not going to make it, right? 
And um, that's tough. And yes. that's that's tough on our that's tough on our economy and, and for James City County's budget. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I know that I'm looking at the calendar and there are lots of things coming up, but probably the most important is the election that's coming up. Yes. Do you want to talk a little bit about what the county is doing with voting? Sure. Thank you for asking. I, I will start by telling you that last week I went over to tour the director of elections office mm-hmm. um, over, well, it's on Palmer Lane, but that is not where you go vote right, uh, right now. Uh, so I don't want anyone to get confused, but people are talking about Mounts Bay and I said, no, there, this off, she hadn't been here for <laughs> many years. Right. So, but It was amazing the amount of work that was being done, not only by Ms. Mormon and her deputy and their staff, which is very small, Mm -hmm. but the number of volunteers that were stuffing envelopes, you know, because not only are they working on absentee mail voting, absentee early voting, they're also getting ready for the general election. Right. And so, you know, you, it's not... They just don't walk into a room. They, they've got to get all their materials ready and, and secured. And, I mean, this is, a, this is a big thing. And this has been a primary year. They have been on full speed for months now. Right. And so it was, you know, I was very impressed with how hard everyone was working. I was so, I'm so appreciative of all the work that they're doing. But... As you mentioned, there is in-person absentee voting going on right mm-hmm. now at the James City County Rec Center, and I think that's 5301 Long yes. Hill Road? Yes, okay. it is. All right. And you can find out on our website, forward slash vote on our website, that gives the hours and, and everything, all the information that you need. She is trying to provide two other opportunities for that type of in-person absentee early voting. And one would be at the Abraham Frank Center down in, um, it's further down in James City County. Um, And that would be starting October 19th and go through October 31st. Right. And then she was trying to get James City County Library in Croker as another location. Check that website just to make sure. But again, the last day to do that is October 31 because they have to then get ready for Tuesday right. for the big day. So, right. um, but we we understand why people want to come and, you know, hopefully avoid crowds and that kind of thing. Uh, but visit the website if you have any questions. Absolutely. And like you've said, everything is on there. There's sample ballots. There's hours. It's, if you have a question... I promise it can be answered somewhere on yeah. that website. So. That's great. That's yep. great. And I also think you can, if you're worried about your ballot, I think there's a way to track them as well. There is, yeah. Okay. And so really, you know, you don't need to worry. Now, occasionally, let's be 100% honest, that that tracking of your ballot depends on the scanning of the post office. Right. And sometimes, not because <laughs> it's... It's nothing they're doing purposeful. It's just one will slip through and doesn't get a scan. And, and mm-hmm. in fact, I just sent I sent two packages to my daughters. One was scanned, one was not. Okay. And they were sent on the same day from the same place. So it it just sometimes things happen. Right. So crazy times. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, th- th- it's it's great that there's been more availability for voting. Right. The hard part is that this is somewhat of an unfunded mandate Mm -hmm. that has come down from the Commonwealth. These types of decisions are made at the General Assembly level. And, you know, it was sometimes at the direction of the governor. You know, he definitely has a um, agenda. And and that's any governor. It's not not this, the one sitting currently. But um, so... It's great that more opportunities are given, but that doesn't mean necessarily that there's uh, monies that come along with it to institute these things. Right. And so, you know, there's a whole lot of people that have been trying to figure out, how do we do this? How do we do this in an an affordable way? How do we do this with enough staff? 
I mean, if it weren't for volunteers oh, sure. in in that office, we would not be able to push out the type of mail that they've been able to push out. It's It's been incredible. And those are volunteers that take that responsibility very seriously. They, and they, they do. And I mean, they consider, I think, that, you know, I, I definitely got the the feeling that they, they consider this an honor to be yes. able to help a person be able to vote. So you're exactly right. Yeah, absolutely. So anything else going on that you want to talk about? Well, I mean, it's, we're busy. I'm, I'm on the school liaison committee oh, right. with, uh, Ms., with Supervisor Eisenhower. And, you know, we are already starting to talk about uh, you know, next year mm-hmm. and the budget. And uh, to that point, I think we're trying to arrange a joint meeting, which would be public between the James City County Board of Supervisors, the City of Williamsburg City Council, and our state legislators okay. so that we can talk about, you know, what's the revenue picture moving forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, schools are I don't know when schools are going to get back to normal and what that means they're having to do hot spots. They're getting help from the library, but they're also trying to push uh, technology out to their students. They're trying to feed students that would normally be in school that would be able to get meals. So, you know, there's a lot of things on the docket that we need to talk about. And there's also some worry, you know, every year on September 30th, in the Commonwealth of Virginia, enrollment is taken, and that is what state aid is based on. It's the number of students that are in your school on that particular day. Mm-hmm. And there was some talk during the special session about perhaps making that date uh, March 13th, which I think was the day that most kids in the Commonwealth were in school. Okay, uh, That did not happen. And so they stuck with September 30, but there's some, there is some worry because some parents have chosen, you know what, there's just too much uncertainty this year. I'm going to homeschool. Right. There's too much uncertainty. I'm going to do this virtual program. There's too much uncertainty. We're just not going to worry about it, you know. Right. Um, and so there, there is very much a worry that the September 30 enrollment number is going to be low. Right. And that is going to impact state aid to localities. And so uh, Ms. Day talked to us about that on the 22nd, and, you know, we, we should know more around the November time frame on how that's going to impact us. Right. And so that's definitely a discussion that we're going to have to have if we see a drop in numbers. And that's not a fault. Of, I mean, the school system cannot help it that there's a pandemic. Right. But... You know, like I said, it's it's definitely going to you know we've got to figure out how to how to work that out if that if that does happen. So there's a lot of it's yeah, like you said, it's a very weird year. Yes, so. and it's just there's a ripple effect yes. that everything affects everything else. It feels like, and it's it's a challenge, but it is. But I do have to just take a minute and just well, I, you know, I've told you a thousand times how much I appreciate everything that you did. Um, and are doing during COVID. I loved your good morning messages. I mean, and so did the community. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Yes. But I am so appreciative of everything James City County staff's doing um, to keep us on track. I don't think we've missed a beat. You know, yes, Mm -hmm. I think sometimes maybe a phone call, but we were doing the best we could do too to try to keep our employees safe. Right. And try to figure that out. And, uh, you know, I think we're back now most people are back working in the office and uh so you know but just just a big kudos for for everybody and especially our police and our fire Mm -hmm. you know who have um you know they didn't they they don't get to work from home right and uh so they you know they've gone out not knowing the type of situation that they were facing and so I'm I'm very appreciative of, of everything and well, our citizens too. Absolutely. And you know, I can I'm gonna speak for all staff. We've definitely have appreciated the support and everything from the Board of Supervisors. Sure. So we're all in this together. Amen to that. Absolutely. Yes. All right. Well, I think that that's gonna wrap it up. Okay. I have not been asking my traditional fun questions, <laughs> but I am gonna ask you, is there Okay, we've been trying to stay busy. Yes. Okay. 
and maybe we're watching shows that we wouldn't normally watch. For example, uh, Tiger King. I may have watched the yes. whole thing three times. Um, anything like that for you? Well, I do, you know, I am a Netflix person mm-hmm. and and only because, to be honest, my kids and, and I usually get my recommendation and I feel so silly calling adult children kids, but I don't know <laughs> quite know what you call them. Uh, adult children seems way too formal. Right. But um, I, oh boy, I've watched a couple of different series on Netflix and I just can't remember all. I did Tiger King. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I, I will. I'm a big Ozark Oh, okay. You know, I'm I so it's I think I've watched some of that over okay. during the pandemic. And um like I said the home edit right has been on there as well. So, you know, I I'll, I'll go on there and usually on, because of your viewing, they'll say recommendations right. for you. And so I'll put I like uh Jerry Seinfeld it Coffee with comedians in cars, oh, yeah. or something along yeah. that line. That's mm-hmm. a good one. Yes, it is. Yes. So, so, and then I, I do watch. I watch a heck of a lot of HGTV. Okay. I love um, Hometown. Oh, have you watched it? No. Uh. Uh-uh. Yeah, that's a really good series about this couple that went back to their hometown after college, and then really trying to bring life into homes that were once occupied and, and trying to revive their town a little mm-hmm. bit. That's a, that's a good one. That's nice. Yeah. There's a lot of good ones out there. Lots of good stuff yes. to watch. Yes. For sure. All right. Well, thank you once again for thank coming you. in and joining me across the football field. Yes. And uh, we will definitely have you back, of okay. course. So, thank you. Thank you. Well, that wraps up this episode of This Week in James City County. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, please take a moment to go online and subscribe. That way you will be sure to never miss an episode. Also, while you're online, go to our page at jamescitycountypa.gov slash podcast. And while there, you're going to find all of our episodes as well as a form where you can give us show ideas, give us comments, critiques. We would love to hear from you. So once again, thank you so much, and we will talk with you next week.